Hey, greetings everybody. It is Gleecon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we did the next to last mission in the Reign of Chaos campaign for Warcraft 3. And at the end of that mission, Illidan became a demon, um, the way we know him, like a demon hunter, and he killed Tychondrius. Um, there's an interlude after that. Most likely it's going to be what we talked about last at the end of the last Chronicles, which is Illidan being banished. And uh, now that he's consumed the skull of Gul'dan, he's going to make his way out. He's talked to Arthas some. So there's things that's going to happen um, later on there. But stay a while and listen as we finish up the second chapter of Chronicles Volume 3. Finish up all of the reading lore for this uh, Reign of Chaos, which is called the Battle of Mount Hyjal. We've now moved into the next year. So I guess this is like New Year's Day right around there because things are only happening a couple days apart. This is 21 years after the Dark Portal. As the Legion steadily ascended Mount Hyjal and approached the Second Well of Eternity, thousands of Night Elf Sentinels and Druids gathered near the mountain summit. They did not fight alone. Though the Druids had been unable to summon the Wild Gods, they had rallied many other forest, forest spirits to their cause, such as the Dryads and the Keepers of the Grove. The Horde and the Alliance refugees also hacked away at the demonic army with all their strength. The gathering of races had not been seen, this gathering of races, since the War of the Ancients. Even so, the defenders were outnumbered, where still most of them were not working together. The night elves and the forest creatures were wary of the Horde and the Alliance refugees. Deronda Whisperwind in particular believed that the two factions were responsible for leading the Legion to Kalimdor. With Hyjal's defenders in disarray, Archimonde sensed that victory was within his grasp, but he did not know of Medivh's presence or of his grand designs. And the interlude is called The Last Guardian, so it might actually be talking about this right here. Medivh brought Thrall, Janna Proudmoore, Tyrande Whisperwind, and Malfurion Stormrage to his side. The meeting was tense. Tyrande balked at the idea of unifying with the Alliance refugees and the Horde, but Medivh eventually convinced her to put aside her prejudices for the good of Azeroth. The disparate factions unified, but they knew they could not defeat Archimonde through brute force. Malfurion proposed a solution, a dangerous and costly one. The World Tree Nordrasil was imbued with powerful enchantments from the dragon aspects, enchantments that granted the Night Elves immortality and immunity to sickness and disease. Malfurion believed that he and his fellow druids could ignite these magics, causing an explosion that would annihilate Archimonde and the Legion invaders but doing so would also destroy, destroy the enchantments, leaving the Night Elves vulnerable to aging and sickness for the first time in over 10,000 years. The impact on Night Elven society would be devastating, but the defenders had little other choice. So this is going to explain why the Night Elves are just a mortal race like everybody else. As Malfurion and his druids prepared to draw out Nordrasil's enchantments, the rest of the defenders dug in around Hyjal's summit to buy them time. Orcs and humans, night elves and tauren, trolls and dwarves, all fought a bitter battle against a relentless tide of undeath and demons. And that kind of explains why this last mission in the game, I think it's going to be a survive a certain number of minute mission. Thousands of defenders died that day, but yeah, probably not. I can only have a, like 100 food units at a time, which is like 20 or 30 guys. But they did not give their lives in vain. By the time Archimonde reached Nordrasil, Malfurion and his druids had completed their work. Countless incorporeal spirits known as Wisps emerged from the forests around Hyjal. They closed in around Archimonde, but they did not attack him. At Malfurion's urging, they instead channeled their energies into the World Tree and ignited the enchantments within. A shockwave of blinding energy erupted from Nordrasil, shaking Kalimdor to its roots. Archimonde was instantly destroyed. So were most of his undead and demons. The Legion's hopes of seizing the Second Well of Eternity were shattered. The defenders immediately launched a counterattack against the surviving Legion forces. Their furious assault destroyed almost all of what remained of the demons and undead in Kalimdor. Arthas Menethil only narrowly escaped the attack. He rallied as many of the Scourge as he could before he retreated to the Eastern Kingdoms. Following the victory, the Horde and the Alliance refugees departed Hyjal in search of new lands to settle. Their tenuous pact would remain, but it would be tested in the years to come. Deronda Whisperwind and Malfurion Stormrage remained in Hyjal and began rebuilding. Most of the surrounding woodlands were in ruins. Worse yet, Nordrasil had been damaged by the explosion. Many of its great roots, which had provided life-giving energies to the world, withered and died. 
Though Norgesil would heal in time, the enchantments from the dragon aspects were gone. The night elves would no longer enjoy immortality or immunity to sickness. They would grow old and infirm. They would die just like all other mortal races. The damage wrought by the explosion also made it far more difficult for Malfurion and the other druids to reach the Emerald Dream. From afar, Medivh surveyed the war-torn world and was relieved by what he saw. The Legion's invasion had failed. Azeroth was safe. For now. Medivh knew that other threats like the Lich King yet lurked in the dark corners of the world, but he could not stop them. His powers were waning, and he felt that his time on the physical plane was coming to an end. The task of safeguarding Azeroth now fell to its inhabitants, just as he had intended. Medivh had shown them that there was strength in unity. All he could do was hope that they would continue fighting together as they had on Hyjal. And with that, the last guardian of Azeroth vanished. And it's kind of setting the table for World of Warcraft, although, unfortunately, what happens by then is, aside from, from tenuous like armistices that they hold um, to defeat greater, greater foes. They're constantly fighting each other, the old Horde and Alliance. All right, that's cool. So we're going to see that play out in the game form on the next episode. But I thank everybody so much for watching and for listening. This one is in the pipe 5x5, five five, and I will see you next time on Lore of Warcraft.